The second area of time investment, time management is this, what I call organizational time, which is basically to help the community. Who to help? Those who need help. The poor, the needy, the helpless, the vulnerable, the orphan, the widows. Basically, these are the people who are at the bottom of the society. They have no power, no wealth, no strength, no support. We need to help them. We have a duty to help them. Because if we don't, then we will be accountable to Allah. And Allah would say, you didn't help me. And, and there's hadith about that, that I was sick, you didn't come to see me. He said, ah, Allah, you cannot be sick, you are the creator. He said, oh no, my servant was sick and you didn't go and see him. And if you went to see him, you would have found me there. And you didn't feed me. He said, how can you be hungry? He said, it's exactly the same way my, my servant was hungry and you didn't care about it. You didn't go and feed him. So this way, we need to have that care, that concern, that commitment, that feeling that we have things they do not and we have to help. So I was seeing one uh, little advert which said, if you are paying a poor person at the mosque, usually we find them in the mosque. If you are paying them, you build their dunya and by receiving it, they build your akhirah. You build their dunya, you build the poor's dunya and they build their akhirah, your akhirah. So it is in our interest. In dunya, we feel good that we have been able to help. Allah will give that feeling to us. And in Akhirah, we will find that the reward. Also, Prophet ﷺ said, if we help poor and needy like that, it removes Allah's anger on the wrong things we have done. I feel that this is something and great, great opportunity for me to remove my many bad things, many mistakes, many blunders I may have done. These people, I need them. So when I get out of the masjid, I have changed my mindset and I feel happy. When I don't find them, I feel not happy. I don't want anybody to go without some form of help from me. So this is a blessing from Allah, what I feel. And I feel that, I think that all the Muslims should feel like that because they are a test for us. These poor, these beggars, these needy people, they are a test for us, for our Iman, for our performance, for our social care, for our duty to humanity. We don't, I mean, the rich people, the powerful people, those who can help themselves, they don't need that help. We can have social connection with them, to go, do da'wah to them, to invite them to Allah and Rasul. Remember, we only invite people to Allah and Rasul. Quran and Sunnah, that is the core issue. Everything is validated by Allah and Rasul. Anybody says anything, that's not valid until Quran and Sunnah is supporting it. Anything I say is not valid, you, you, have, you can reject it. But when I say this is because Allah said that and Rasul said that, then it's not me any, anymore. So this way, we need to connect. If everybody connects to Allah and Rasul, then there will be a lot of harmony. The values will, be, uh, co will coincide. We can work together better. We can connect together better. We can respect each other better. This way, we need to understand that the poor and the needy in the society, this is Allah's plan. They have to have sabr. And we have to have shukr. So much so that Imam Ibn Qayyim al jawziyyah who is not so well known in the subcontinent, more well known is Imam Ghazali, because the personal inside person's research was done by these two people. One is well known because his books have been translated in Urdu, Bangla and the other languages. But Imam Ibn al Qayyim's books are just being published now in translation. This man, this Imam, Imam Ibn al Qayyim al jawziyyah has written a book that has been translated into English, which is available in Saudi Arabia. 
you can buy this. It's called Sabr wa Shukr, Patience and Gratitude. Patience and Gratitude, 320 pages in English. Just think about it. Iman can be described as both Sabr and Shukr. Sabr in pain, Shukr in gain. Sabr in pain, Shukr in gain. That's the way we need to look at society and play our social role, our organizational role. We shouldn't do it just individually. That's not good enough. We need to be organized. We need to form a group and then I call it 3I formula. I have to have interest in it. I must get involved with others who have common interest to do something for the poor and then take initiative to deliver something for their benefit. So interest, involvement, initiative. These are the three steps to get something done for the poor. We also have to understand that the Prophet ﷺ said, if you are stomach full, if you have eaten your meal and your neighbor is hungry and you don't, didn't care, then you are not a good Muslim. So socially aware, caring in the community, caring for others, caring for those who may not be able to help themselves is a duty, is a divine duty. The Prophet Islam's statement is that we may think we are good Muslims because we are praying five times a day, we are doing fasting and all those duties, and we are earning halal, which is vital, which is critical. Without halal earning, our prayers are not accepted. So that's another side to it. So we need to realize that all these people around us, all the people we know, all the people we are in touch with, are we do doing our duty? To say salam is a duty, because it's a dua. And he replies, and you know something? The Prophet ﷺ said, if there's a tree in between you and the two of you have separated and come back, you say salam again. And then if you're going out of the room, coming back to the room, you say salam every time. So more salam means more dua, more dua means more reward. So why are we not doing it? This is the culture of the Muslims. Goodwill to others and serving others because Allah's Prophet ﷺ says, khairun nas man nas. The best people are those who help others, who benefit others, who benefit others. Just think about it. Have I benefited anybody? Have I joined a group that is benefiting the poor and uh, helpless people? That's the question we need to ask. And then finally we need to think everything we are doing not for reward. Quran says very, very nicely. La nuridu minkum jaza'an wa la shukura. We are doing all these favors, all these duties, all these tasks of helping you. But we don't learn to read minkum jaza and we don't want any reward from you. Wala shukura and thanks we don't want either. So we don't want any reward, we don't want any thanks from you. That's the mindset, that's the objective, that's what's heart is pounding on. Basically, it is doing for Allah. And we do it in a silent way, in a hidden way. The more hidden, the more reward. The more public, if the intention is to encourage others, that may be different. But in general, we need to do good deeds that only Allah knows and I know. That's the way we can actually invest time for a huge reward. Little, little things we can do. We can smile. This is Sadaqah. Rasulullah said, you give smile to somebody, somebody may be distressed. We give time to get that brother or sister out of that distress. That's huge rewarding investment. We get reward in dunya and akhirah in both places. And indeed, indeed, the, 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 the missing of prayers, Allah may forgive at, at times if we have been neglectful in the past or occasionally we miss. But on the other hand, if we mistreat people, Allah says, I will not forgive until he forgives. So this is more serious. In a sense, haqqullah haqqul ibad. So we need to be careful about all these good deeds that we are doing in society. Number one, we should do good deeds. Number two, we should get involved with groups that's doing it so we can be in a teamwork and we can achieve more. And number three, do it only for Allah's pleasure. Do it only to seek reward from Allah and nothing else, nothing, nothing else. Let's purify. Otherwise, there is lack of ikhlas. And lack of ikhlas means, lack of sincerity means there is nifaq. There is hypocrisy inside. So let's clean that hypocrisy to make it purely for Allah. And it's not going to be easy because shaitan is not sitting idle. So we need to ask Allah for help and we need to be alert that we need help. May Allah help us and guide us so that we can do something for the community that will last a long time and will reward us a long time. 
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك